my dear friends, my dear brethren, my brothers and my sisters, once again it's exciting to come into your living room tonight. And for me it's more exciting, uh, I'm more excited by the fact that you have all come together from your different homes, uh, your different offices and different backgrounds to participate and fellowship with one another. It's exciting for me. House to house is the heartbeat of City of David. And so I'm glad, I applaud you, I congratulate you for being a part of that heartbeat of City of David. Now we're going to have an exciting conversation this evening and uh, I'm sure God is going to speak to us. But let's start once again by praying. Father, we thank you once again tonight for this opportunity to come together as um, a body of Christ and brethren, one brother and one sister to another. I want to thank you. Lord, as we study your word and we dig deep into your word, Lord, speak to us. And grant, O oh Lord, that we'll be blessed, we'll be ministered to, and our life will be enriched by your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good. Now, last Sunday, I treated a message titled, Hating Children, Hurting Parents. Children hate their parents. Some children hate their parents. They don't speak to their parents. And parents are hurting. And it's both ways. Some parents hate their children because of the things that have transpired. And some children are hurting because there is no close knit interaction. The bond is not there. The fellowship is not there. The love is not there. It's all tension and pressure. Now, before I go on, I want to read three Bible passages for you. One is Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, where God told Jeremiah, listen to what God told Jeremiah from verse 5. He says, oh uh, no, verse 5, yeah. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the, to the nations. God says that I formed you. Before you were born, God formed you. Before you were born, God knew you. And what God did was that he used an intermediary. He used vehicles, midwives, your parents, great-grandparents who came together. And then your parents were born and your parents now gave birth to you. And look at what God says about you in um, Psalm 127 verse 3. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord. It simply means that you really do not belong to yourself, number one. Number two, you do not even belong to your parents. They are caretakers. They are custodians. They are stewards taking care of what God brought into this world to fulfill a mandate, to fulfill an objective. I said it on Sunday, and I'm going to say it again. The family... The family is the most potent force that God has on earth to carry out his purposes and to carry out his agenda. And that's why when he created Adam, he gave him a wife. And when he created both of them, he said, produce, reproduce and multiply and fill the earth. So the family unit is the most powerful force. And that's why the enemy is coming against the family unit. That's why the enemy is creating this tension, this animosity, this hostility between parents and children, children and parents. And God is not pleased by that. So you are a heritage of the Lord. You've got to understand if you're a child, you've got to know that you belong to God. You've also got to know that God created you into this world for a purpose. God had a plan when he created you. And you also have to know that God used your parents to bring you into the world. And that's why it's important for you to know that, number one, you have a purpose. There is a purpose of God on your life. You may be grown today, you may be in your 90s or 80s or 70s or 60s or 40s, as the case might be, but there is a purpose of God on your life because you are some other person's child. Okay? So you've got to know that. So God places a demand on you as his own creation, as his own person that he puts in this world to carry out his purpose, the mandate that God placed on your life. He said, I ordained you, I sanctified you, I put you here for the purpose, and you are my heritage. So you've got to know that. And parents also have to know that what you are doing is that you are just taking care of the child. That's your responsibility. So you, number one, I want you to know, parents, that these children did not bring themselves into the world. You brought them, you know, through the help of God, they came into the world. So your burden and your responsibility is to ensure that there is a fulfillment of the purposes and the plans of God for their lives. That's why the Bible says, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. Train up the child so that when the child is old, the child will not depart from it. It's your responsibility to train the child. It's the responsibility of the child to, to allow the parent 
to train you. Allow your parents to train you. A friend of mine puts it this way. He says, I tell my children, let me do my job in your life. In the same way, sometimes I talk to my children too, and I say, listen, I have a job to do in your life, to train you, to bring you up, to give you wisdom, to, to give you counsel, to reprove, to rebuke, to rebuke, to encourage, to instruct, to comfort, to support, but let me do my job. Stop fighting with me. Stop arguing with me. Stop struggling with me because you don't know better than I do. Of course, there are areas where, your, of course, your children know better than you, but allow your parents to do their job. Okay, I'm going to read the third Bible passage now, and then we'll begin to wrap up uh, my conversation for today so that we can, we can dig in deep. You, you know, because I, I believe, for instance, that what I'm talking about is important for every family. It's important for you, it's important for me, it's important for everybody. Because that's what we are dealing with. You're either a parent or you're either a child. And every child or every parent has been a child of somebody. So that's why this conversation is very relevant. Because in a family unit like this, revival cannot happen. The power of God cannot be revealed. The power of God cannot be expressed. The presence of God cannot be expressed in its totality if people do not build the bridge and ensure that there is that connection, there is that uh, bonding, there is that re re uh, relationship between parent and children and children and parents. So look at what uh, Paul here was writing. Paul was writing to the Ephesian church and he told them this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Your parents in the Lord. There are two types of parents in everybody's life. Number one, if you belong to a local church, number one, your spiritual parents. Your spiritual parents. If you belong to a local church, I tell people I'm a local pastor, but I am also, uh, I have spiritual fathers over me, spiritual parents over me, people who I defer to, who I submit to, who I listen to their guidance, I listen to their instruction, I listen to their reproof and their rebuke. And I have, for the same reason, I have Christian siblings, you know, other brothers and sisters who I consider them a part of my close-knit family. I listen to them. I submit to them. So the Bible here says, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. I don't want you to be a loose cannon. I don't want you to be a lone ranger. I don't want you to behave independent of pastoral and spiritual oversight. You've got to submit to some spiritual leadership. The Bible says that obey them in the Lord when they speak to you, when they counsel you, when they mentor you, when they minister to you. Obey them in the Lord. The second dimension of that is this, that as a child, you obey your parents as they give you guidance that is in alignment with the word of God. The, some, some parents will tell you, you, you know, they want you to do something that is wrong, that does not agree with the word of God. But no, you cannot do that the, because the, the greater father in your life, in fact, the greatest father in your life is God of heaven and earth, the one who created you, who formed you, who brought you into this world. So when parents want to make you do things that are not biblical, you've got to put your foot down and say, no, I am not going to do it. You have to take a position. You have to take a stand for God. You know, the apostles put it this way. He said, it is better for us to fear God than to fear man. And Jesus put it this way. He said, fear the one who can kill your body and your soul. Not just the one who can kill your body, but does not have a right over your soul. So you obey your parents regarding the things that are in alignment with the word of God. You've got to obey them. Then he goes on to say, he said, honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Two things there. Number one, that it may be well with you. And number two, that you may live long on the earth. I, I know when I, you see, when, when I studied this, and like I, I said on Sunday, you, you know, uh, we come from different backgrounds where parents have been, some parents have not helped our situation. Some parents have made life harder for their children. They either were not there, they are, you know, I mentioned some of those things, parental neglect, uh, you know, the parents were not there, uh, they ab abandoned the children. Some, in some cases, unfortunately, the parents are there, but they're not paying attention. They're either spending too much time on the phone, or spending too much time on social media, or spending too much time watching TV program, or spending too much time with their friends. They are there, but they are not there. So the children who are at home are living their own life. They are running their own, uh, their own ship, and that is not right parental neglect. In some cases, it is parental indulgence. 
You overindulge your children. Everything the child wants, you give. Everything the child does, you don't even exercise some oversight, some, some particular control over the child's life. Those, those, those two things are wrong. You know, in some places, it's parental abuse. Some parents have made it difficult for children. You abuse your children, either verbally or physically or in other areas where you, you, know, you abuse your children. You don't believe that those children will become anything. So because of that, some children find it difficult to honor their father and their mother. But my friend, it's a command from God. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and that your days may be long on earth. Honor them, respect them, you know, trust them, look up to them, allow, treat them with dignity and treat them with a measure of gravitas, you know, rely, you trust them to bless you with their words and with their prayers, honor them. And then, on the other side, it says, parents, it says, do not, and fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, do not provoke them, do not prov provoke them to anger. He said, but bringing them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Do not provoke them to anger. Do not provoke your children to anger. Because that's what some parents do. You over-discipline your children. You don't provide emotional support for your children. You do not provide social support for your children, social security. You don't provide financial support for your children. It's all about you. You're always a self-centered, selfish parent. Listen. I can never minimize the labor and the struggles of parents. It's a lot of work. But it's your burden. He said, do not provoke them. Do not lead them to anger. Because some children are vexed and angry because of the way parents have treated them. Because of the way fathers have treated them. You over-disciplined your child. You either over indulge your child or you abandon your child. You do not provide for the child. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. Good parents provide for their children. The Bible says that a righteous man will give an inheritance for his children's children. So good parents do not only provide for their children, they are thinking long term. You are thinking about your grandchildren. It's your burden and it's your responsibility. So the Bible says, it says, parents do not provoke your children. So rather bring them up in the training of the Lord and in the admonish them, uh, uh, admonishing of the Lord. You want to admonish them in the Lord. You want to train them. You want to ensure that they reach their highest potential. Give them the education they need. Give them the support they need. Give them the counsel they need. You should keep an eye on their friends and on their relationship. You want to make sure that you give them the counsel they need. And then, of course, you are praying for your children. In this age and day in particular, where too many things are happening, where we are literally not in control of some of the experiences and the situations that our children go through, you are praying constantly for your children. You, you know, uh, in Psalm 72, um, David, you, you know, one of the greatest kings that walked and lived the face of the earth was Solomon. But Solomon became that great king because he had a father, David, who prepared him for that position and prepared the position for him and provided resources for that position and for him. You, you know, in Psalm 72, David prayed. He said, you know, he said, the queen of Sheba, he said, he said, you get gold, you will get resources, gifts from Sheba. And we know that one of the greatest visitors that Solomon had was the queen of Sheba. Queen of Sheba brought a lot of resources, brought gold and, and, and uh, wealth and all of that to, to Solomon. And Solomon, yeah, in turn, of course, blessed her. It was the prayer of David. David even provided resources for him to build the, tab the, the tabernacle at that time. You know, David made sure that the, the network, his network with, uh, and relationship with the other kings around and the uh, uh, powers that be around were intact and good so that when Solomon came to office, Solomon enjoyed a good reign. It was a lot of the labors of Solomon. So as a parent, you want to ensure that you work hard, you labor hard, and you create a foundation, you create an environment, you create an ecosystem where your children will grow up and enjoy and be thankful and, and be happy that they had a parent like you. My dear friend, we're going to go deeper, we're going to dig, dig deeper into this, um, into this conversation. And I, I do hope that people will be honest enough, will be vulnerable enough to ensure that we really participate. God bless you. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, help us, oh God, as we dig deep, open our ears and open our hearts and open our spirits even to glean the best materials, the best teachings that you want to deposit into our hearts and our lives today. We thank you, Father. 
pray in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.